Are you dealing with the effects of narcissistic abuse? By the end of this video, I will give you some ideas to start using today, right now, that you can use to start feeling just a little bit better. Hi, I'm Rebecca Zung, top 1% divorce attorney and the best-selling author of the books, Negotiate Like You Matter, and Breaking Free, a step-by-step -step divorce guide. And I've helped thousands of people go from lives of drama, trauma, and chaos to step into lives of freedom, possibility, prosperity, and purpose. And I do the same thing right here with you in these videos. So before we go any further, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the little notification bell so that you can be informed when I upload new videos every single week. Now, if you're dealing with a narcissist in your life, whether it's a covert narcissist, a grandiose narcissist, or a malignant narcissist, or some combination of any of those, then you're dealing with all kinds of craziness. I, I've been there too, and I know exactly the kinds of things that they do. I've represented them. I've been on the other side of them with opposing counsel, and I've had them as opposing clients. You know, I've seen them in all different realms, and so I know the kinds of things that they do, and I know the kinds of things that you're going through. So, you know, you're dealing with things like gaslighting, where they actually just try to make you think that they're crazy. And for those of you who don't know, what gaslighting is, is when they say something to that is obviously completely counter what, to what you believe and know to be true. So, for example, they'll say something like, um, you agreed that we would do it this way, or we had a conversation about that, and this is what the end of that conversation was and and these are the points that that we agreed on and you'll say no we did and we never had that conversation i mean maybe you even you didn't even have the conversation at all or maybe you had a conversation but it didn't include that and then you start questioning your own sanity and that's what gaslighting is and and it's actually it's a very very powerful form of abuse uh it it comes from an old movie from the 40s called Gaslight. And in that movie, the husband was actually trying to make the wife think that she was crazy. And so he would blow out these gaslights and she would say, wasn't that just lit? And he would say, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. And that's exactly the kinds of things that narcissists do. All forms of narcissists, all, all different types of narcissists use gaslighting as one of their little bag of tricks things that they do to try to control you and manipulate you. So that's one of the things they do. One, another thing that they do is manipulate you. So, and that comes in all different forms. It might be in emails, it could be in person, it could be in texts or whatever, but they're constantly trying to manipulate you. They also can be condescending. They go through periods of love bombing you and then devalu devaluing you. Love bomb, devalue. Love bomb, devalue. It's a very powerful way to keep you coming back to wanting to um, get those love bombs back again because you keep thinking, well, I, they, they said that I once was the most amazing person they ever met. You know, where's that? I know that they thought that at one point. And so you, you find yourself craving to get back to where you were before with the love bomb. Um, they will ignore you. They have a lack of boundaries. Um, you're supposed to respect their boundaries. They don't have to respect yours. Um, so uh, passive aggressive behaviors. This is especially true of covert narcissists. I unfortunately have had to deal with not one, but two covert narcissists that were in my close, close, close to me in my world. Not husbands, but people close enough that it, it did a lot of damage, a lot of pain, a lot of trauma. And so um, I know from whence I speak and I know how horrible they can be and absolutely it's, it's gut-wrenching. They, they literally drain the life out of you, these people. So I do understand that. I've made a couple of videos on, on covert narcissists. You're going to definitely want to check them out if you suspect that you are dealing with a covert narcissist. One of them is called covert narcissism in relationships. And the other one is just passive aggressive covert narcissist. I highly recommend you watch those and I will drop links to those below so you can check them out. 
Another thing that narcissists do is triangulation. And triangulation is when um, they try to get what we call flying monkeys on their side. It's an old reference to the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz, where she had her flying monkeys. And these are people that just are mindless or whatever. They don't understand what's going on. They don't see what's happening. And so they're just being used as pawns in the narcissist game. And um, it's, it's meant to try to um, intimidate you so that you think, oh, you better behave because everybody else in your world thinks that this person is amazing, or you better behave because um, everybody else is going to think you're the one that's crazy. So, you know, because they, they're getting these people on their side. So that's what triangulation is or flying monkeys. Obviously, lying, all narcissists are pathological liars, lovely. And, you know, intimidation, threats of violence, stalking, or actual violence are some of the other things that you might see with narcissists tend to be, they tend to be more like the malignant version. Um, but if these all sound familiar and you are ready to feel better, give me an I'm ready in the comments. I know I was ready when I was dealing with narcissists. So when you're dealing with a narcissist and you're trying to get over one or you're still dealing with one, it, it just can be brutal. You, you, they kind of just, you end up like almost obsessed with how to deal with this person. And I understand that. I've had to do it myself. So um, here are some of the things that worked for me. So one of the things was pivoting. So really, I very much try to not let these people rent too much free space in my head. So, you know, when you start getting down that cycle of really focusing in on, I can't believe this person didn't see all that I gave to them or didn't see what a good person I was. And, and, and you know, I gave all this and they still want more, or I can't believe that they would treat me this way after all I did, you know, because that's put yourself in victim mode. And if you're in victim mode, then you can't be in create mode. You can't be, you know, in, in confident mode. You can't be in getting to the rest of your life mode. So, you know, as fast as you can pivot out of that, I mean, deal with them the way you have to deal with them, but then, you know, spend whatever time you have to do with that. And then the rest of the time, do not spend any more time on thinking about them. Easier said than done. So what I would do is I would have, you know, a, a menu of things that I'm going to think about instead, you know, whether it's uh, writing my book, which was one of the things that I finished, you know, while I was dealing with a couple of these narcissists. So I wrote Negotiate Like You Matter, um, or maybe it was, you know, creating a program for me on for people like you dealing with narcissists, or it's dealing with my, my law clients, or... Um, or calling a friend, or calling one of my kids, or talking to my husband, or whatever, or, or singing a song that I love. Just anything, anything that you can do to be thinking about something other than giving that person any more attention or space in your head. So that's pivoting. So um, another thing is meditation. You know, really just meditating, clearing your mind, even if it's five minutes a day, it actually starts to change your neuronal patterns. It starts to change your breathing. You know, sometimes when we're so stressed, we don't even realize we're not even taking oxygen into our body. So, um, you know, just taking a few deep breaths just refreshes the cells in your body and gives them oxygen and gives you more energy. And, you know, just picture as you're breathing, you're, you're breathing in positive energy. And as you exhale, you are just releasing all that negative energy and that negative tension. So even just set your, your, your phone for five minutes a day, it'll make a huge difference for you. Um, and then the third thing that you can do is raise the vibrational energy of the people that you spend time with. Don't spend time with people who um, bring you down. You know, we all have vibrational energy it's measurable. This is a, a law of physics. This is not a woo-woo thing. Um, and, you know, if you are with people who are, you know, sad or depressed or bringing you down or, or who aren't supportive of you, you know, I mean, be with people who want to fan your flames, not douse your fire. 
And if they want to douse your fire, then find another group of people to be with because those aren't friends. Those aren't, even if they're family, you don't need to spend as much time with them. You want to be with people who are going to make you feel really good after you spend some time with them. Okay. Next thing is just being active. Another, you know, another way to get oxygen into your brain and into your cells is, you know, even if you just take a brisk walk around the block a couple of times a day or, um, you know, go to a yoga class or do something that's going to make you feel like, um, like, you know, you can breathe a little bit better, you know. Um, I'm ha I happen to be uh, recording this video during the time of coronavirus and this whole pandemic. So, you know, if you can't leave your house, then just, you, there's always YouTube, right? You're here on YouTube with me now. So find a yoga class, um, find something to do that will help make you feel more active. Um, and then, you know, the last thing is is kind of related to the pivoting, but it's just keep focusing on what you want and not what you don't want. So, you know, it's really easy to focus in on, I, I don't want this anymore. I don't want them to be acting any like this anymore. I don't want them to be in my space. I don't want them to be harassing me. Um, I, I, you know, just keep focusing on what you do want. What do you want in your life? You want to feel at peace. You want to feel in flow. You want to be surrounded by people who love you and you love them. Just keep focusing on that and just keep using that as your mantra. This is what I want. This is what I want. This is what I want. So, um, and I have another video on how to outsmart a narcissist. If you haven't seen that, you should definitely check that out. I will drop a link to that below. And if you're getting ready to negotiate with a narcissist, you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out my Crush My Negotiation Prep Worksheet. I will drop a link to that below as well. I also have a Facebook group, it's totally free, um, and it's called Narcissist Negotiators, and I will drop a link to that. If you'd like to be part of that, just uh, make sure you answer the questions because we do want people who are going to be in, in that group that are actually dealing with narcissists so that we can all support each other. So thanks for watching this video. I'm Rebecca Zung, top 1% attorney and the author of the books, Negotiate Like You Matter and Breaking Free, a step-by-step -step divorce guide. And if you like this video, make sure that you give it a like, give it a share, drop a comment, let me know you were here. I do try to respond to all of my comments and um, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure that you do that and hit the little notification bell. And remember that today is a great day to start negotiating your best life.